Hi guys, good morning. So aside from volcanic eruptions, another natural hazard that may cause disaster are earthquakes. So that will be our lesson number 2 for chapter 3. Now when you say earthquake, it refers to the movement or shaking of the ground on the earth's crust. So as simple as ay, yung pag shake ng ground, no ground shaking that is earthquake. So it might be a result of recent volcanic activity, but mostly it is tectonic related. So yung, uh, definitely once na magkaroon ng volcanic eruption, syempre, nag-shake din yung ground. O di naman kaya, nagkakaroon ng uh, mismong paggalaw sa lupa. And that is tectonic related. Ibig sabihin, nagkikiskisan, nagbubungguan yung mga plates na meron tayo. No? Now, it results from the dynamic release of elastic stain energy that radiates seismic waves. No? So, we're talking uh, about elastic stain energy. So, we have here this what we call elastic rebound theory. No? So, what does it mean? So, the elastic rebound theory is derived from the concept of a spring. So, bakit ba tayo nagkakaroon ng shaking of the ground? Dahil dito sa idea, no? sinasabi ng elastic rebound theory, na ang ating lupa daw, ang ating ground, is like a spring. No? So, when a spring is compressed, it gains energy and releases the energy when the, the stress is removed, resul uh, resulting to wave-like movement. So, kumbaga, yun nga, no? ang lupa daw natin ay parang spring na kung saan, once na makompress, ibig sabihin, yung energy ay na-gain. No? And then, once na uh, ma-release itong energy na to, no? so yung stress ay na-remove. No? Now, as these plates meet, stress accumulates. And later, energy is released from the stress in the form of ground movement. So, yun nga, once na-release, no? na-release itong stress na to, no? itong energy na to, yung pressure na yan, so that is the time na magkakaroon na tayo ng ground shaking. No? Now, additional movements of the plates may occur ac uh, accompanying the main shock in order to gain stabilization of the plate. Now, once na nagkakaroon tayo ng ground shaking, meron tayong tinatawag na, ayan, we have different shock. No? So, we have what we call fore shock, main shock, and yung tinatawag din natin after shock. No? Now, these additional movements are known as after shocks. No? So, yung mga nararamdaman na natin mga, ayan, mismong, ah, uh, mas malalakas, mas distracted na paggalaw ng lupa, that is after shocks. No? Now, the Philippines is prone to earthquakes because it of its geological location and the tectonic setting. Since the uh, Philippines is part of Pacific Ring of Fire, ibig sabihin itong lugar na to ay maraming active volcanoes and uh, yun nga, falls and trenches. No? Kaya, ayun, ang Pilipinas, no? madalas nagkakaroon tayo ng naka-experience tayo ng earthquake. Now, we have here three major earthquake generators no, in the Philippines. So, una na dyan ay yung Philippine Trench. So, it extends about 1,320 kilometer and is located east of the Philippines. So, ano ba to? Or saan ba ito matatagpuan itong Philippine Trench na to? So, yan, no? Andito sa yan, right side ng ating yan, bansa. That is Philippine Trench. Next, Another uh, earthquake generator, we have here, Manila Trench. Ayan. So, ito naman yan. Ito yung ating, ayan, ito yung Manila. Ayan, ito yung Philippines. Ayan. And then, ito yung, sa paligid na, nito, ayan, nasa uh, left side, no? Ito yung tinatawag natin Manila Trench. And it extends about 560 kilometer and is located west of Luzon, no? And then, last, number three, we have what we call Philippine Fault Zone. No? So, lahat ng mga red na lines na yan na nakikita nyo dito mismo, no? Yan, sa, yan, sa mga islands natin. No? So, that is what we call Philippine Fault Zone. And it extends about 1,200 kilometer across the archipelago. Yan. Now, these faults were responsible, itong mga nabanggit na to, no? Now, these faults were responsible for the earthquakes which the country has experienced. No? 
lalo na dun sa mga nagdaan uh, yan, based sa history natin no? yan, so napakarami na no? ng mga earthquakes na naganap no? and for example yan, we have here the 1990 Luzon earthquake so ayan eto familiar na kayo dito sa mga itsura na yan no so again this is uh 1990 Luzon earthquake no which had a uh, 7.8 magnitude and was the result of the left lateral strike slip movement no o yung tinatawag natin ng movement yun no ng ating yung tinatawag na digdig fault no isang fault na meron tayo dito sa ating archipelago Yan. So, nung, nung time na gumalaw ito, yan, naglabas siya ng 7.8 magnitude, o yung energy nga, no? And, ayan, tanyo naman kung gaano ka-devastated yung mga lugar na natamaan sa Luzon, no? Now, within the Metro Manila, there are two active fault system, no? So, pansinin nyo to dito. Yan. So, we have ito. We have West and East Valley Fault System. So, Let's have the first one, East Valley Fault. So, the 10 km East Valley Fault. Yan. So, yun yung una. Yan, blue na yan. And then, the 90 km West Valley Fault. Ayan. So, syempre, dito nga, kasama nga dito yung NCR. And, ito nga yung tinutukoy nila, na once daw na gumalaw, no? Ito yung tinatawag natin, the big one. No? Kasi ang tagal na daw nito na hindi pa gumagalaw. Kaya once, no? Once na ito ay mag-release mag na no, ng energy, definitely lahat ng nandyan, no? Ay devastated. So, expected disruption and effects. Yeah. So, as you can see, 37,000 ang pwede daw mamatay. No? And then, 4.6 uh, million. No? 4.6 million ang pwede yun, yung mga informal settlers uh, na maapektuhan and then, ano pa so sabi rin dito yan, so 2.3 trillion worth of damage no? kapag gumalaw daw yan yung tinutukoy nating West Valley Fall no? and 40% no? pwedeng mag-collapse yung mga buildings na matatagpuan dito, no? 40% magko-collapse so, imagine kung gaano ka-devastated once na gumalaw, no? O magkaroon ng earthquake dito sa area na ito, no? Now, according to Freebox, the longer the fault, the higher is the magnitude of the earthquake that it can generate. So, ibig sabihin, the more na mahaba daw, no? Yung isang fault line, so, mas mataas yung energy o yung magnitude na kanyang maipoproduce, no? So balik tayo dito, no? Yan, so pansin niyo kung gaano kahaba yan. That is 90 km, no? So buong NCR o Metro Manila, no? Yan. Talagang devastated once na gumalaw ito. So movements along this fault pose a threat to the residences and infrastructure in Metro Manila. So the shaking of the ground also possess a threat to areas where the type of rocks below can naturally be dissolved by the ground water. So, dun kasi, uh, 80% nung lupa dun, no? Yan. Ay made up of, yan, limestone, no? So, even dyan sa, sa bohol, no? Yan. So, ibig sabihin, yung limestone na yan, water soluble, no? Now, this explained the discovery about 100 sinkholes in Bohol after a 7.2 magnitude earthquake shook the province on October 15, 2013. So, ito, buhay naman na kayo na ito. <laughs> Yan. Uh, nakita nyo naman, nabalita na ito. Diba? Nabalita ito. Ayan. Na ganito ka-devastated, no? Itong uh, area na ito, itong Bohol, no? During the time na nagaroon nga nitong earthquake na ito. 7.2 magnitude earthquake, no? So, at doon lang din nalaman nila na meron palang fault line doon sa Bohol. No? Now, while the earthquakes do not create sinkholes, the 2013 Bohol quake facilitated the rupture of the ground. No? Possibly exposing cavities beneath the surface. So, yun nga, since nagaroon na ng ground rupture, no? ayan, nag, uh, kumbaga, bumuka yung lupa 
Yan, so nalaman nila, no? Na meron pa lang fault line doon, no? So by the way, pag sinabi nating Okay, wala pa. <laughs> Ayan, ito, yung Project Noah. So, mamaya. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng Project Noah, no? So, the source of the earthquake was initially dito, no? Sa Bohol, no? Believed to be the East Bohol Fault. Yun nga daw, so, sabi, no? Na etong earthquake daw, ang generate nito ay yung East Bohol Fault, no? Which was the only map active uh, fault in Bohol prior to the quake, no? Now, according to a published uh, post-disaster assessment report by Project NOAA, pag sinabi natin NOAA, Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazard. No? And again, Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazard. However, the source appeared to be an unmapped fault 20 to 25 kilometers north uh, the East Bohol Fault. No? So, ibig sabihin, ay nga, no, uh, hindi pa kumbaga no hindi pa alam na meron pa lang fault doon sa area na yon no ang alam lang nila ay yung East Bohol fault pero meron pa lang karugtong pa yon no or meron pang uh, kumbaga umugat no nagugat no etong ating East Bohol fault now the edges of the tectonic plates are marked by fault o yung tinatawag na nating fracture sa lupa, no? Yan. So, most earthquakes occur along the fault lines when the plate side pass each other or collide against each other. So, yun nga, no? Uh, Siyempre, alam nga natin, di ba, na itong mga fault na ito, yan, syempre, mga opening to sa lupa. Ngayon, kapag nag, uh, gumagalaw, no, yung ating uh, mga plates, syempre, gagalaw din itong mga fault na ito, no? And once na Uh, yung energy ay mas stored na no doon sa mga plates na to na nagbungguan o dito nga sa mga fault line na to no and then suddenly ito ay kanyang i-release and kapag na-release niya ito doon na nga papasok yung earthquake no? now the shifting masses send out shock waves that may be powerful enough to una no it can alter the surface of the Earth, no? So, definitely, once magkaroon ng ground shaking, yan, pwede niyang uh, sirain, no? Baguhin yung surface ng Earth. Pwede magkaroon nga ng mga bangin, no? Kasi yung isang parte ng lupa, umangat. ba? Diba? O din man kaya bumaba, no? And opening great cracks in the ground. No? So, pwede mag, uh, yun, magkaroon nga ng uh, opening sa lupa. And, ano pa yung pwedeng gawin, no? nitong uh, waves na to no o ng energy na to o ng earthquake itself no so number two, it can cause great damage so paano yun no syempre ay nga damage pwedeng magkaroon ng collapse of buildings and other man-made structures it can also broken power and gas lines and and then eventually di ba pwedeng magkaroon ng fire no o di naman kaya magkaroon ng landslide ng avalanche ng tsunami no and volcanic eruption no so yan yung ilan sa mga possible na pwedeng mangyari no now punta tayo dito yan so we have this uh, what we call fault or fault plane so ito nga yan no yan nakita niyo so ito yung ating fault plane ngayon pag sinabi nating fault plane so it is the surface where two blocks of the earth suddenly slip past one another ibig sabihin nagkiskisan no kasi nga fault line 'yon, no? Ngayon, yun nga, meron tayong tinatawag ayan, fault again, no? Fault fracture whose side have moved, no? And then once na nagkikiskisan 'yon, syempre nagkakaroon ng nagsusurge ng energy 'yan, no? Halimbawa dito. Ngayon, once na itong energy na 'to ay ma-release, no? So dito na papasok yung tinatawag nating yun nga, yung mismong earthquake, no? Na lang meron tayong tinatawag na hypocenter or yung focus kung saan mismo no nag-start yung earthquake no doon sa dalawang uh, fault no na nagkiskisan and then sa ibabaw noon no sa surface ng earth yun yung tinatawag nating epicenter it is the location on the surface of the earth directly above the hy hypocenter no o yung focus so ito yung focus sa ilalim sa surface ng earth that is epi center. 
no? Okay, mali ulit po dyan. Now, the destruction of an earthquake causes depends on, no? So, yung magiging destruction daw, no? Magiging epekto ng isang earthquake ay nakadepende sa mga mababanggit, no? Una, magnitude and duration or the amount of shaking that occurs. So, ibig sabihin, nakadepende ang magiging destruction ng isang earthquake depende sa kung gano'ng kalakas yung energy na pre-produce at kung gano'ng katagal ito nangyari, no? O nangyari yung paggalaw sa lupa. Next, a structure design and the materials used in its construction also affects the amount of damage the structure incur. Ibig sabihin, uh, nakadepende yung destruction ng isang earthquake, depende sa materials na ginamit sa isang building o dun sa isang structure. Definitely, kung hindi nga ito uh, maayos, wala sa uh, kalidad, no? Siyempre, madali itong masira, no? And then last is the kind of material to which the seismic waves pass. Ibig sabihin nakadepende sa uri ng lupa, no? Magiging uh, nakadepende sa uri ng lupa yung magiging epekto, no, ng isang earthquake. Now kanina nabanggit ko kung ano yung ayan nabanggit natin, no, yung magnitude. Ngayon define natin ano ba yung magnitude at anong difference ni magnitude at nung tinatawag nating intensity. No? So, pag sinabi nating magnitude, so magnitude of the earthquake describe the extent and severity of damage it may cause. In describing an earthquake, it is important to differentiate magnitude from intensity as these terms are totally different from one another. No? So, in short, pag sinabi nating magnitude, ito yung energy na nirelease nung nagkaroon ng ground shaking. No? Ngayon, pag sinabi naman nating intensity, ito naman yung effects, no? Epekto sa tao, yan, sa structure at siyempre sa environment, no? Now, magnitude is measured using the Richter yan, Richter scale, no? Ang tinatawag na ayan, so ang nag gumawa nito, no? I see Charles Richter uh, who, uh, yan, who developed it in 1935 so ito nga yan no? so we have here this magnitude yan. so we have 2.5 or less 2.5 to 5.4 and then so on and so forth no? and then it's corres uh, corresponding effects no? so 2.5 or less usually not felt but can be recorded by seismograph So, lahat naman ng ground shaking, no? lahat yan nare-record ng seismograph na tinatawag. And then, 2.5 to 5.4, it is often felt, naramdaman, but only causes minor damage. Halimbawa, nagkaroon ng, uh, nagkaroon ng pag-crack no? sa mismong building. Yan. And then, 5.5 to 6, slight damage to buildings and other structure. And then, 6.1 to 6.9, it may cause a, uh, a lot of damage in very populated areas. No? And then, 7 to 7.9, major earthquake na yun. So, serious damage. And then, 8 or greater, syempre, mataas. The more na mataas, mas destructive yun. No? So, it can totally destroy communities. Next, pag sinabi naman natin intensity, again, no? Ito yung naging effect ngayon. Ayun nga, no? Meron tayong... Ayan. We have here this table. Ayan. Different intensity. Ayan. Let's say, for example, intensity 1. No? Description niya. So, it is not felt except by a very few under special favorable conditions. So, intensity 1 lang. No? Yung pre-noduce na itong earthquake na to. So, usually, hindi siya ganun na papansin. And then, intensity 2. Ayan. Ayan can be felt only by persons at rest especially on upper floors of buildings no and then ayan so yung iba-iba pa nating intensity so ito ayan uh, basahin niyo na lang no so hindi na natin siya i-discuss one by one kasi napakarami niyan no pero ayun nga no the more na tumataas ang intensity the more na mas nagiging matindi yung kanyang effects ayan Now, what are the signs of an impending earthquake? So, here are some of the factors that can be considered, no? Para masabi natin na 
meron nagkaroon ba ng earthquake o magkakaroon ba ng earthquake no so una ay yung animal behavior pero bago yun linawin ko lang no na wala naman talaga makakapagsabi no kung kailan magkakaroon ng earthquake no pero eto lang daw yung ilan no so, sinasabi na pwedeng ah uh, magsabi na magkakaroon nga tayo ng ng earthquake no so yun nga animal behavior where in animals often exhibit an abnormal behavior before an earthquake halimbawa no bigla na lang kayo makikita, makikita ng biglang nagliparang mga uh, ibon no so possible na doon sa lugar na yun nararamdaman na ng mga ibon na yan very sensitive sila no na merong movement no na may mangyayari no? And then, yan, we have here change in atmospheric condition. So, strange changes in color or glow of sky. Pwedeng white, blue, and light orange are said to show that an earthquake is about to, to hit. Pero ito ay hindi pa napapatunayan. No? And then, last, yan, electromagnetic disturbance. So, there are speculation that there is a relationship between yung magnetic no and electrical charges in rock materials and earthquake so kapag nagkaroon ng pagbago pagbabago no doon sa magnetic uh, and electrical charges na meron tayo no ang ating planeta so isa raw yun sa pwede nating ayun masabi no na magkakaroon ng ng earthquake no? and then ayan we have also what we call boom sound no so trembling kumbaga no sa sa lupa no so kapag narinig niya yon automatic daw na yun na meron daw earthquake no trembling sound occurs before and during earthquake no yung tunog na pinuproduce no ng lupa once na nagkakaroon ng ground shaking that is boom sound no now eto yan so bibigay ko naman sa inyo itong presentation na to so papakita ko lang dito yung mga uh, most destructive known earthquakes no And sa buong mundo to. Yan. Say for example, ito December 26, 2004, ito ay nangyari sa Indonesia. Yan, wherein naglabas ng earthquake na merong magnitude na 9.1. Imagine guys, napakataas. And look kung gaano katindi ang naging epekto nito. So we have to uh, 227,898 ang namatay. No? So dito Uh, ang nangyari kasi dito, ang earthquake ay, ang focus niya ay sa tubig. Kaya yun, nagkaroon ng tsunami. Yan. Yan. As you can see, devastated. Diba? Yan, walang natira. Yung mosque lang. Diba? Next. Ito naman, uh, way back nung sev- uh, May 31, 1970 naman to, sa Peru. 7.9 magnitude. So, ang namatay lang naman, Yan, we have 110,000 Approximately 110,000 Imagine kung gano'ng katindi eh. Ground rupture diba? Sira, Devastated yung lugar no? Mga tinamaan diba? And then next ayan, Ito naman sa kanto lang to ng Japan ayan, Kanto, Japan ayan. So ang namatay is 1, ay, 142,800 No? and then sinasabi na 40,000 daw ang yun, nawawala and syempre, automatic na yan patay na yan no? pero imagine na magnitude is 7.9 pero since Japan to yun nga no at yun, yung unang panahon pa hindi pa ganun katindi yung, kanil, uh, yung technologies nila ba diba? kaya sobrang tindi rin ang epekto yan ito rin dun pa rin to, no? sa kanto, kanto lang to ng Japan, yan dun yan, nagkaroon din ng sunog diba yan, mga emergency response team nila dun ito yan likas and then ito guys yan, ito yung matindi, ito yung mga namatay dito sa earthquake na to although sanay naman na ang mga Japanese, no sa earthquake kasi nga may halos mayat maya yung earthquake sa kanila sa totoo lang Ayan. yung mga building nga nila actually no share ko lang yung mga building nila meron merong mga spring sa ilalim para mas surpass yung mga earthquake na 
yung ground shaking na nangyayari. Kasi nga halos may, may meron sa kanilang earthquake. And then yan, mga patay yan. No? And then eto, syempre, mga tao, kung saan nalang may tubig, kung saan pwede, pwede pumweso para maligo, yan, dyan sila pupunta. No? Yan. And then, eto, no, ilan pa sa mga uh, most destructive known earthquakes. No? So, yun guys, no, and... Yan. So, il so, ilan dito? Yan. So, tingnan nyo na lang sa presentation, no? Yan. So, pakita ko lang. Ayan, no? So, ito, saan nga po ulit? Yung balik ka lang natin, no? Ito ay sa, yan, sa Pakistan. Yan. Noong 2005 lang to no? Imagine, no? Yung building nag-collapse. Dami na trap doon. No? And 86,000 ang namatay. And more than... 69,000 ang na-injured. Ayan. Ayan. So, ito, hindi sila lalaro ng langit lupa dyan, ha? <laughs> Nagdadasal sila. Nagdadasal. Tignan nyo kung gano'ng ka-devastated, di ba? Yung lugar. Ito naman, ito, kumbaga para siyang slum. Alam nyo yun? Kumbaga, uh, ano bang, squatter area. Ayan. Parang ganun. Slum. Yan. And then, yun. Maraming bahay dyan. Siyempre, mamay hirap lang yung mga nakatira. At yung mga bahay nila ay hindi ganun kaganda yung quality. Kaya, nung nagkaroon ng earthquake, yan. Talagang devastated. And then, yan. yan. Siyempre, yan. Ito ay ilan, yan, sa mga, ano ito, no? Iba pang ibang mga bansa, no? Siyempre, papatalo ba tayo? That meron din tayo. Meron din tayong i-offer. <laughs> yan. So, we have the 1990 Philippine earthquake, no? So, yan. So, masyadong naapektuhan dito sa earthquake na to yung yan, yung Benguet. No? Siyempre, kasama ng yung Baguio. Yan. Ayan. So, ito yan. Ilan sa mga pictures, no? I survived the killer quake. Then, ito rin. Ayan. Tapos, ito yung Baguio Hilltop Hotel. So, imagine, no? Para siyang pinipit. Ayan. Lalo na itong mga sasakyan. Pipit talaga. Ayan. And then, we have also 7.2 Bohol Earthquake. So, yung Chocolate Hills. Ayan. Actually, naging puti ito eh. <laughs> Yan, kasi, kumbaga, nag, uh, nagkaroon ng landslide. No? Ayan, ayan. Ito yung sinasabi ko. <laughs> Yan. Ba? Tapos yung mga historical na mga churches doon. Yan. Talagang nasira. So, imagine kung gano'ng kalakas yung earthquake. Ayan. So, kung napapansin nyo, may isang uh, part ng lupa na umangat. And then, yung isa ay bumaba. Then, ito rin. Ayan. Picture, picture. Ayan. <laughs> Ayan. Then, ito rin. Ayan. So, dati pantay yan. And then, nagulat sila. After earthquake, nakita nila umangat yung isang parte ng lupa. Ayan. And dito lang din nila nalaman na meron palang fault line doon sa kanilang lugar yan. yan, ito ay ground rupture ibig sabihin kumbaga yun nga, nagkaroon ng opening sa sa lupa and then, yan so ground shaking, ayun nga no, yung kanina ko pa binabanggit, yun nga, yung mismong earthquake it is the term used to describe the vibration of the ground during an earthquake no? so it will vary on an area due to such factors, depende halimbawa, sa topography no, yung taas o yung level ng lupa uh, bedrock type no, kung anong uri ng lupa ang meron dun sa isang lugar no, ano yung mga uh, materials na meron dun sa lupa no, and the location and orientation of the fault rupture so lahat yan nakadepende no? now this all affect the way seismic waves travel through the ground no? 
Now, for your next activity, ito yung gagawin niya, no? So, how safe is your house from an earthquake? So, ito ay checklist lang na kailangan yung, ay nga, sagutan. No? And then, after nun, yan, you have to answer this guide question. So, una, is your house earthquake safe? And then, explain your answer based on your score. So, dito kasi ko compute nyo kung anong score nyo dyan, no? Yan. And then, be honest, no? Wala namang mali dito. Yan. Basta makita ko lang na ginawa nyo. And then number two, if it is not, what are the steps your family should do to strengthen your house and make it more resilient to strong earthquake? And last, why it is important that your house is built by a licensed civil engineer or architect and not just by a neighbor who knows about carpentry and has experience building houses. No, so latian, no latian, ay inyong kasagutan. So, that's the end of this lesson, earthquake. So, mag-iingat kayo. And, ayan, kapag nagkaroon ng earthquake, uh, drop, cover, and hold. No? O, mas kilala siya as drop, cover, and hold. No? So, ayan, mag-iingat kayo. And, thank you for listening. Bye!